Well, hello. Welcome to Treehouse Tales, brought to you by the Glendale Public Library and GTV6. My name is Mindy, and I work at the Pacific Park branch of the Glendale Public Library. So I brought some of my favorite stories today, and I hope you enjoy them too. Now, how many of you know a song called, I Know an Old Lady Who Swallowed a... Bug. Close. <laughs> I Know an Old Lady Who Swallowed a... Fly is what it usually is. But this is different. This is, I Know a Shy Fellow Who Swallowed a Cello by Barbara S. Gariel, illustrated by John O'Brien. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a cello. I don't know why he swallowed a cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a harp. Not so sharp to swallow a harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a sax. Hard to relax when you swallow a sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a fiddle. No time to twiddle when you swallow a fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a cymbal. Not so nimble to swallow a cymbal. He swallowed the cymbal to jam with the fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a flute. That was a hoot to swallow a flute. He swallowed the flute to jam with the cymbal. He swallowed the cymbal to jam with the fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a kazoo. Strange thing to do, swallow a kazoo. He swallowed the kazoo to jam with the flute. He swallowed the flute to jam with the cymbal. He swallowed the cymbal to jam with the fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a bell. The teeniest, tiniest, petite cascabel. Well, his belly, it wiggled. His belly did shake. It rumbled and tumbled. It quivered and quaked. It rocked and it rolled. It swiveled and swelled. And all on account of that wee little bell. So... He belched, and he burped, he turned shades of yellow. It seemed he was doomed, that very shy fellow. He weaved and he wallowed, he stomped and he yelled. And the next thing he knew, out jingled the bell. Then, out buzzed the kazoo, out tooted the flute, out crashed the cymbal, that noisy galoot. Out flashed the fiddle, out sizzled the sax, out strummed the harp. He played to the max. Well, he bellowed, that fellow, that fellow did bellow. And last but not least, out cha cha the cello. There you go. Okay. Okay, the next one we're going to do is a story that um, was gathered by the Brothers Grimm. It's called The Twelve Dancing Princesses, and this version is retold and illustrated by Rachel Isadora. There was once a king 
who had 12 beautiful daughters. They slept each night in a locked room, but every morning their shoes were worn through as if they had danced all night. The king made it known that whoever discovered where the princesses went at night could choose a princess for his wife. If after three tries they failed, they would lose their life. Many tried and failed. One day, a soldier traveling on a road met an old woman. She asked where he was headed, and he told her that he was going to try and discover the secret of the princesses. That is not difficult, she said, but you must not drink the wine brought to you, and you must pretend to be asleep. She gave him a cloak. With this, you will be invisible and can follow the princesses without being seen. She said goodbye and went on her way. The soldier went to the king and was led to a room attached to that of the princesses. He did not drink the wine that was brought to him, and he pretended to snore. When the princesses heard the soldier snore, they laughed and quickly got up and got dressed. Believing that the soldier was sound asleep, the eldest princess went to her bed and tapped it. Suddenly, it sank into the floor, and the princesses ran down a dark passageway. The soldier put on his cloak and followed. The youngest princess thought she heard someone following them. Don't be silly. There's no one there, said the eldest. Soon the princesses reached a grove of trees with silver leaves. Then they came to one of gold leaves and one of diamond leaves. The soldier broke off a twig from each. They came to a lake where 12 princes were waiting in 12 boats. The invisible soldier sat in the boat with the youngest princess, and the prince wondered why it was so difficult to row. They all reached the other side, where there were lights and music. Everyone danced under twinkling stars. The princesses danced on and on until their shoes were danced through, and they could dance no longer. The princes rowed them back to shore, where they all promised to meet the next night. The soldier ran ahead, so the princesses found him sound asleep when they returned. He followed them the next two nights, and on the last night, he took a cup away with him. The time arrived for the soldier to speak with the king. Where do my twelve daughters go at night, the king asked. To a place underground, where they dance with twelve princes, the soldier replied. Then he told the king what he had seen and showed him the three branches and the cup. The king called for his daughters and asked if the soldier spoke the truth. Knowing their secret had been discovered, they confessed. The soldier chose the eldest princess for his wife as he was not very young. They were married that very day. And everyone danced and danced all through the night. There you are. Okay. Um, the next story that we have is called The Great Smelly Slobbery Small Tooth Dog, retold by Margaret Reed MacDonald, illustrated by Julie Pashkis. And this is a folktale from Great Britain. A rich man was set upon by thieves, but suddenly 
A great, smelly, slobbery, small-toothed dog leaped from the bushes. Ruff! The dog chased the robbers away. You saved my life, said the man. Come to my house tomorrow. I will give you one of my treasures. In my house, I have a golden fish that can speak 100 languages. Would you like that fish as your reward? No, said the dog. I would not. In my house, I have a golden bird that can sing 1,000 songs. Would you like that bird? No, I would not. I also have a golden goose. It lays one egg a day, solid gold. Would you like that? No, I would not. I have named all my treasures. What could you want? In your house, you have a beautiful daughter. That is the treasure I choose. It was true. The man's daughter was his greatest treasure, but he hadn't thought about that. Come to my house tomorrow, he said sadly. So the man had to go home and tell his daughter all that had happened. But his daughter was not afraid. You gave your word, she said. I will go with the great, smelly, slobbery, small-toothed dog. Next day, the dog came to take her away. Jump onto my back. Hold tight to my fur. I'll take you to my house. You're going to like it there. She climbed onto his back and held tight to his fur. Off he ran over the fields to the first hedge, and he leaped that hedge in a single bound. And over the fields to the second hedge, and he leaped that hedge in a single bound. And over the fields to the third hedge, and he leaped that hedge in a single bound. And over the fields to his very own house. His house was a, a castle. There was a bed with silken sheets, a closet of silk and satin dresses in just her size, and shelves of books just the kind she liked to read. Every evening the dog came to her room to dine, and after dinner he told her such funny stories she laughed and laughed. In the afternoons they would play on the lawn. She would throw his golden ball and he would bring it back. She would throw the ball again and he would bring it back. Then they would sit in the shade of a tree and he would lay his great head in her lap. She would stroke his soft fur, even though it was smelly, and murmur, Dear dog, you are sweet as a honeycomb, as sweet as a honeycomb. But at night, when she was alone in her room, she would think of her father and miss him so. I'm held prisoner here by a great, smelly, slobbery, small-toothed dog. One day, the dog found her weeping. What is wrong? Don't I give you everything to make you happy? Everything, yes, but I miss my father. I'll take you home for a visit. Climb onto my back and I will take you there. So she climbed onto the dog's back, held tight to his fur, and off he bounded over the fields and over the fields. But when he came to the first hedge, he stopped. Wait, what's that you always call me? She knew what he wanted to hear. I call you sweet as a honeycomb. Yes, he leaped the hedge in a single bound and over the fields to the second hedge. What's that you call me? By now, she was thinking of getting home to her father and she forgot to be kind to the dog. Oh, I call you a great smelly, slobbery, small-toothed dog, she muttered. Ruff! He whirled and raced back to his house. 
and the girl did not get to see her father that day. Next week, he found her crying again. Jump onto my back. Hold tight to my fur. I will take you home for a visit. Off they bounded over the fields to the first hedge. What's that you always call me? She vowed to say only sweet things about the dog this time. I always call you S sweet as a honeycomb. Yes. Yes, he leaped the hedge in a single bound and over the fields to the second hedge. What's that you always call me? Sweet as a honeycomb. Sweet as a honeycomb. Yes. He leaped the hedge in a single bound and over the fields to the third hedge. What's that you call me? She could see her house in the distance. She forgot to be kind. A great smelly, slobbery, small tooth. Woof! Next week, she was crying again. Climb onto my back. I will take you to your home over the fields to the first hedge. What's that you always call me? I call yes, you sweet as a honeycomb. Yes! Over the fields to the second hedge. What's that you call me again? Sweet as a honeycomb. Yes! Over the fields to the third hedge. What's that you always call me? Sweet as a honeycomb. She was careful to say sweet as a honeycomb. Yes! Over the fields and right up to her door. Wait, once more. What's that you call me? But the girl had her hand on the latch to go in. A great smelly, slobbery, small tooth. And then she looked down and saw such sorrow in the dog's eyes. Oh, dog, I'm sorry. I call you. Sweet as a honeycomb, sweeter than a honeycomb. When the dog heard those words and saw the look of love in her eyes, he ripped off his smelly fur and became a handsome prince. And with the smallest teeth you ever did see. So she was married to the prince with the small small teeth. And on sunny afternoons, she throws the golden ball and he brings it back. She throws the ball again and he brings it back. Then they sit in the shade of a tree and she strokes his hair, which isn't smelly at all anymore, and murmurs, Dear Prince, you are sweet as a honeycomb, honeycomb. sweeter than a honeycomb. Okay, I have one more dog story, and this one's called Queenie, One of the Family by Bob Graham. Look, said Caitlin's dad. What is it? asked Caitlin's mom. It's a hen in the lake, replied dad, and he did not hesitate. Off came his shoes, off came his socks, off came his hat, off came Caitlin. Caitlin's dad knew that the hen was in trouble, big trouble. She's a bantam, said mom. Wrap her up warm, said dad. What's your name? Hattie? Tessa? Molly? said mom. No, Queenie. I think you're a queenie. That night might have been the end of the story, but it wasn't. Queenie was soon very much at home in Bruno's basket. And in time, Queenie saw Caitlin's first steps. One, two, three. Queenie had become one of the family. But Caitlin's mom knew that Queenie had a home of her own. I think she lives on the farm over the hill from the lake, said mom. So mom and dad and Caitlin and Bruno 
set off for the farm. Mom was right. This was Queenie's home. Caitlin, her mom and dad, and Bruno the dog went home with milk and cheese and fresh eggs. And Bruno got his basket back. That might have been the end of the story, but it wasn't. The next morning, Queenie got up before the sun. She flew over the fence and ran along the path and past the churchyard. She went around the lake and through the woods, over the road, across the park, and down the street to Caitlin's house. And in Bruno's basket, Queenie laid a single, perfect egg. It was Caitlin who found the egg that morning, and the next morning, and the next. Every morning, Queenie made her journey from the farm to Caitlin's house and back, leaving the gift of a small brown egg. Only once did they spy on Queenie laying her egg, and never again. It didn't seem right, said Mom. It seemed private, said Dad. And so, the weeks turned to months. There were changes in Caitlin's house. There was a new baby in the family. The story might have ended right there, but it didn't. After the new baby came home, Caitlin forgot to collect Queenie's eggs. Bruno reclaimed his basket, and Queenie never returned. Bruno hatched the eggs. Chicks! Those chicks need their mother, said Mom. So they all went back to the farm. Where's Queenie, said Caitlin. Caitlin's mom and dad and the new baby went home with bread and milk and cheese. And guess what Caitlin brought home? A chick. Bruno made room for yet another addition to the family. One day, the chick will be full grown and may see Caitlin's brother take his first steps. But that's another story. Okay. So, thank you very much for joining us for Treehouse Tales on GTV6. And I hope you'll come and see us often at the library and um, you can check out some of these books and some of our other good books too. So, Thanks very much.